So in this video, we are going to use the method of variation of parameters to solve a differential equation like this uh, with, con with constant coefficients. So the strategy that we are using is that first we shall uh, attempt to solve this homo homogeneous part, okay? So say it so happens that the solution of this homogeneous part, which we also happen to call like complementary function, so say it turns out to be y equals uh, c1 y1 plus c2 y2, where c1 and c2 are constants, and y1 and uh, y2 they are linearly independent functions of t. So, so we are going to first find the complementary function and then by using this method developed by Euler and Lagrange, we shall use the method of variation of parameters. So what that states is this, that say, it's that we do this, let's replace the parameters by two differentiable functions of t, okay? And if the solution is possible, we shall have the solution in this manner, if it is possible to solve in this way, of course. So say we are assuming that this is our solution, so Remember, you, you read in the book that, uh, and also in the notes, that if we did this, if we went ahead and substituted this back in our equation, then what happens is that uh, we get one equation in u1 prime and u2 prime like this, and uh, the other equation that we obtain between u1 prime and u2 prime uh, would be by taking the derivatives of these two quantities. So here we go, we got, so here's the derivative, and then this quantity equals the function that we have here, the forcing function, all right? So there we go. So these are the two equations that we will be solving. Now, as an example, we are taking up this differential equation, d2, oh, sorry, d2y dt square plus uh, y equals secant t, and uh, the initial conditions are that y0 is uh, 1 and so is y prime 0. That is also 1. So if we first do this, that is uh, go ahead and solve the auxiliary equation or the homogeneous part. So when we are solving it, uh, what do we do? That we assume that if e to the power s t, where s is a constant, so if uh, this is a solution, okay, then uh, what will happen is substituting this value in this, we shall get s square plus 1 equals 0, all right? Which will uh, give us s square equals uh, negative 1, and s is going to be, what simply? Plus and minus i. So using the Euler's formula, what we get is that the complementary function in this case is going to be c sub uh, 1 cosine t plus uh, c sub 2 sine t, all right? 
So now what we will do in the method suggested by the variation of parameters, we are going to assume that the, uh, that the particular solution is, so we are replacing these by u1 and u2. So if the particular solution is uh, this one, or rather a particular solution, then uh, what's going to happen is that we are relying on these two equations in u1 prime and u2 prime. So of course that will bring the uh, bring a little bit work of finding antiderivatives. So we will take u1 prime, uh, u2 prime. So what did this suggest? This suggested that this will be zero. And uh, on the other hand, if we did uh, this, took the derivative of those linearly independent solutions of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous part, that would be, so I'm writing these, so that's going to be the forcing function here, that is secant t. All right, so if we look at this, then the, these two equations, they amount to what? See, this would be, if we differentiate cosine t, we are going to get what? Negative sine t, all right? And if we differentiate sine t, we are going to get cosine t. Now let's let this be the equation number one and this be the equation number two. All right, so now we can do this. Notice that uh, we have you know, quite friendly equations here uh, and um, we can use the method of elimination and in there you can see we are having two lucky things. One is if we multiply the equation one with cosine and the equation two with sine and add them up, then uh, then these two will uh, cancel, uh, sorry, rather <laughs> this by sine and this by cosine, then these are going to cancel. And um, we can also make use of Pythagorean identity. Now, I think I'm going I'm speaking too much here and writing less, so let me not do that. So this is what I was suggesting to use the method of elimination. What that will do is that we multiply the equation one by sine t. This will be u1 prime sine t cosine t and multiply two by cosine t. This will be negative u1 prime cosine t sine t and adding the two up will cancel these two and eliminate the term containing u1, u1 prime. And what we shall get then is that this uh, thing here, u2 prime uh, multiplied by sine t will result in sine square t. Likewise, this one here, when we multiply this by cosine t, this will result in cosine square t and you can see just for the video I took uh, a pretty easy example but anyways so this is what we have and uh, then what we get is that uh, if we take u2 prime as a common factor in there then uh, what will happen is we get this square of sine and cosine of the same quantity and cosine times secant of course will be one. So what it gives us is that uh, that u2 prime is uh, one, okay, which gives us uh, what right away? That will give us, sorry about that, that u2 is going to be the antiderivative of one, right? And which of course is t, all right? Now, on the other hand, notice this here. If we had multiplied this by cosine and this by sine 
and had subtracted instead u2 prime that term will be eliminated so why don't we do that so we would do cosine of t times 1 plus sine t times 2 all right uh, I'm sorry minus that is we are subtracting so that u2 prime gets out of way so what we will have here then is that we shall have u1 prime cosine square t plus and now when we are subtracting this sign will change to a positive sign so then we have this sine square t and uh, then since we are subtracting we'll get a negative sign and then of course sine t secant t what uh, does that give us that will give us when we factor a u1 u1 prime out we shall get this uh, inside the parentheses and this will become what tangent t right and uh, then this again we can use the pythagorean identity and the and this becomes a one and that's what we got which is going to give us uh, u1 equals how much the antiderivative of negative tangent t I can take a negative sign out and then I got tangent antiderivative of tangent t which will be negative absolute value of natural log of secant t that's what my u1 will be right so what we have then is uh, this this was our complementary function right now we are writing the general solution so first we have the sorry the complementary function and then we will add the particular integral that we had assumed and what we had for the particular integral this one and uh, so here we have this particular integral now for u1 we have t and for no sorry for u2 we have t and for u1 we have negative natural log of uh, secant t i'm so sorry about writing it like this and actually it will look less confusing confusing if I wrote it like that now we have to apply the initial conditions that y0 equals uh, 1 and y prime 0 that equals 1 as well so y0 equals equals 1 what will that give us that is going to give us that uh, 1 equals we just substitute t equals 0 in here all right so when we do that we got cosine of 0 then we have sine of 0 cosine of 0 secant of 0 sine of 0 and then here we have a 0 so what happens then all these guys will become 0 because secant of 0 is 1 and natural log of 1 is 0 sine of 0 is 0 and this product is going to be 0 as well and this will be a 1 right so what we get here is that our c1 equals how much that equals a 1 now if we uh, differentiate this solution what are we going to get okay let's differentiate it 
with respect to t of course so what we have this will become negative uh, sine t and here we get what cosine t c2 is a constant oh, sorry about that so that's uh, c top sub 2 cosine of t and uh, then i will get plus sine t because this negative and derivative after negative would be a positive so i'm using the product rule this becomes plus sine t and then i get cosine of t times what derivative of secant of uh, sorry natural log of secant of t is tangent of t and then again here i'm using product rule the derivative is one here then i have t cosine t and uh, that gives me what if i take the values at zero what would i have i would have here uh, sine of zero would be zero cosine of zero would be one so i'll have a c2 sine of zero is zero and uh, this is natural log of one that will be zero tangent of zero is zero sine of zero is zero and when we take this as zero a factor is zero so the whole thing will be zero so what does that give us that simply gives us that c2 equals what was the initial condition y prime is one right so what is our particular solution then both these guys are one so our answer to the initial value problem is right here okay y equals this quantity all right so let me know if you have any questions okay